How about a mini PC with an i9? That's what you're looking at here. This is the Geekom Mini IT13. Let's do this. You ready? Anyway, let's talk about what I'm holding here in my hand. Now, this is about the same size as an Intel NUC, but you're going to get a lot more for your money when it comes to Geekon, but it also has that really high quality build that you would expect from a small unit like this from a big brand like Intel. It does feature the Intel i9 on the inside. You can get it with an i7 as well. It's kind of crazy that this exists because it's a lot lower in price and higher performance when you compare it to the uh, Intel NUC stuff. So I'm going to have a NUC coming in soon. I'll do another video just comparing the two so you can see the difference. But, you know, it's tiny. It's got the 4x4 motherboard on the inside, and it's completely loaded. Please don't go out and buy a retail copy of Windows because it's going to cost you 10 to 12 times as much as this. This is where I've been getting my Windows keys for the last couple of years, right here on whokeys.com. They're my longtime sponsor as well, so thanks for that. The difference is this is an OEM key, so it's tied to the hardware, but you'd have to buy this 10 or 12 times to make it equal the cost of retail. The other difference is you'll be doing your own tech support here because you don't get the Microsoft tech support, but we're building a system, and I don't think any of us have ever used Microsoft's tech support, so that's why I like to use whokeys.com. Now, they're having a back-to-school special, so these prices are even lower than what you see on the screen for Windows 10 Pro. We also have Home, uh, Windows 11. Just to note, Windows 10 Pro at this time does also unlock Windows 11, so go online and Google and make sure that Windows 11 can still be unlocked with a Windows 10 key. We have Office 2021, 2019, and 2016 here. I always recommend grabbing a copy of Windows 10 Pro, so you get 20% off of the Back to School Special, but if you use my coupon code TS25, you'll get 25% off. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. Wonderful. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. You know, I never liked how Microsoft has different prices for different people. If you're a home user, you're gonna pay 10 times more than an OEM builder or a corporation or something like that. And that's why I like heading to places like whokeys.com to get the OEM keys so I can pay a price that makes sense. So thanks to them for sponsoring and now to our regularly scheduled program. So let's go through the specs and then I'll talk about who this might be good for and we'll do some benchmarks and show it in action with some games. They also included a screen for me to check out. I said no at first, but then I realized that the resolution was 16 by 10, not 16 by 9. So I said, yeah, yeah, let me take a look at that because I like that extra bit of real estate. Now, this is a 16 inch monitor. Now, 16 by 10 means 1920 by 1200. And you may think, oh, that's not. Yes, it is. It's really cool. So we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video too, but I'm showing a lot of the footage here with this device plugged up to that 16 inch monitor, which is the PM16. So first up the size, it's 117 millimeters by 112 millimeters by 49.2 tall, 652 grams. For the Americans, that's like uh, three liters. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and then it's the 13, uh, 13th gen Intel, you can get the Core i7, 13700H, if you like. Now, that one is very similar to the i9 that this one has. It's got the i9 13900H. Uh, they both have 14 cores. They both have 20 threads. They both have 24 megabytes of cache, which is more important than you think for doing a lot of multitasking and just a lot of just processing, whatever. But um, the i7 goes up to 5 gigahertz. This one goes all the way up to 5.4 gigahertz. Now, how can they do that in a tiny case like this without it overheating? That's what you're asking right now, right? Well, I was very surprised um, with, with how well this stays cool. And I did a test. I'll go ahead and show you the ADA test on the screen right now. Now, you'll notice when I first turned on ADA, and if you're not familiar with that, it's a program that taxes the CPU to 100%, and then you let it run to see how warm the system gets and if there's any throttling. So when I first turned it on, it immediately spiked up and got very hot. And I was like, oh, this thing's really quiet. And I saw, oh no, it's about to throttle. And then as soon as it did a tiny bit of throttling, the fan ramped up. So the fan was a little bit slow for like the first three or four seconds when it first shot up to 100, but immediately the fans kicked on and you could hear it. You know, it's it raised the decibels in the room by like 10 decibels. So it got a little bit louder and then it stayed in the 60s. As you can see, it, I left it on for 30, 40 minutes, just let it roll for a long time until my <laughs> the screen went to sleep. So I couldn't capture all of it, but um, yeah, it stayed in the 60s the entire time which is extremely nice for something of, of this size to be able to go all the way up to 5.4 gigahertz and stay at a nice temperature in the 60s. I remember the TJ Maxx on this is 100 Celsius and uh, we're not coming anywhere near that. Now when you're playing games 
it's not going to tax the CPU to 100%. So you're not going to have to worry about that. The only time that's going to be taxing it to 100% is if you're doing some rendering, AV1 files or H.265 or whatever. But you can throw Handbrake on here and just let it render and just walk away and let it do its thing and it'll stay cool and, and nothing's going to get damaged. Uh, next up, let's talk about the graphics card. We have the Intel Iris Xe, and this one has 96 execution units, as they call it. So 24 megabytes of cache also helps with, with that. The graphics card on the inside is not made for playing AAA games. I mean, this thing is tiny. There are graphics cards nowadays are like two or three times the size of this entire computer. But you can play some games. I played Baldur's Gate 3, and if you're a crazy person, you could absolutely play Baldur's Gate 3 on this because it's going to run in the 20s to maybe 30 uh, FPS on the low setting at 1080p. If you played it at 720, the game is still really fun because it's turn-based and it doesn't require action combat. So you can play some modern games with those caveats. I would probably not, but you can. Uh, games like, you know, Starfield and stuff, the new AAA games, they don't support this graphics card. They need dedicated graphics cards. But a lot of the modern indie games and a lot of the old games will play just fine on this. The gaming is going to be something you do on the side, whereas just having this as a really fast, powerful computer to do productivity stuff. Let's go through the ins and outs, and then I'll open it up and show you what's under the hood. So on the front, we've got two USB 3.2. One of those will do fast charge. And then we have microphone headphone combo port right there. Turning it around to the side, we've got just a vent and then our Ken Kensington lock on that side. And then on the back, we have a whole bunch of stuff. See those USB-C? That's USB 4. And one thing that's cool about USB 4 is you can drive a lot of throughput through there. Uh, and this will do DisplayPort for two different monitors at up to 8K 60 Hertz. Now, the HDMI will do 4K. So you can have two 8K displays and two 4K displays. Of course, the 8K displays could also, you could also get 4K displays, 1080, whatever. But you can have four displays going at the same time with this unit. We have um, also on the back Ethernet, and it's uh, 2.5 gigabit. The nice thing about 2.5 gigabit Ethernet is you can upgrade your boxes on either side, your router or whatever, your switch, and it'll just work. Like you're not gonna have to upgrade your cabling or anything. So I like having the 2.5 on there. And then we have another USB 3.2 and a USB 2. Why is there a USB 2? Well, you know something? A lot of things don't need all that bandwidth, like mouse, keyboard, whatever controller, even a lot of webcams. And some things actually work better on USB 2. So I'm glad that they included that. Then on the last side, we have, again, another mesh vent and SD card. Okay, now, in order to get under the hood and see what we're working with, we have four feet here that are secured by screws. You just unscrew those, and then you can lift off the entire bottom. I'll lift off your bottom. Now, inside here, we have, you see those two RAM slots? Those are SO DIMMs, and this is DDR4-3200. Now, why DDR4 instead of DDR5? I'm glad that you asked me that. Well, the difference in speed between DDR4 and DDR5 doesn't matter as much. In fact, it's usually better to have more RAM then it is to have faster RAM. Now you will get a tiny speed boost here and there, but I'm kind of glad we have DDR4 because it's way less expensive and very, very similar as far as the performance goes. The one I have comes with 32 gigabytes of the 3200 megahertz DDR4, but you can install up to 64 gigabytes in there if you wanted to upgrade it. Um, then you'll also see we have two M.2 slots here. Now one of those is 2242, that's the form factor, and the other one is the 2280 that can handle up to two terabytes. NVMe and it's a PCI Express Gen 4 for the super fast speeds and then the 2242 is also the same thing PCI Express Gen 4 and that one can handle up to one terabyte if you still need more storage in this tiny case as long as you can get a seven millimeter thick 2.5 inch SATA uh, drive you can pop that in here as well so you can have three hard drives in this now above and beyond that we also have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 so there's a lot in this how do they how do they put everything in here it's ridiculous now let's talk about the power draw the power adapter is 19 volt 6.32 amps it draws up to 45 watts so one of the things i really like about this now even though my big rig my big system can render videos faster a lot of times i will render on one of these on one of my smaller like i9s or one of my other little ryzen's or something i love rendering on these like using handbrake if i'm rendering movies or video files because it may take a little bit longer not as much like a, not as much as you would think but it uses far less power so I like to do that kind of stuff on here. These are also really powerful if you wanted to run Proxmox machine or a VM environment or something. You'll have lots and lots of overhead. Now let's talk about that CPU one more time. I said it was 14 cores. Well, yes, six of those cores are your high performance cores. And then the rest are the efficiency cores. Then they, they run all the stuff in the background. Um, and sometimes if you minimize something, it'll be running in the background, which is 
neither good or bad. Like if you have handbrake running and you minimize it and start playing a game, maybe the background uh, processes will take over and you'll end up rendering slower, but you'll still be able to play your game because your, your beefy cores are what's running your game or running your program while something else is happening in the background. So it's a pretty cool system. I, I like what Intel's been doing with these because we don't always need 10, 15 really strong cores unless we're doing power use stuff all day long. Now, speaking of power use, I did install Adobe Premiere on here because I wanted to see how I could handle 4K video and it was so smooth. I tried to slow it down. I put some video footage from this, 4K video footage, and I turned it all the way up to the highest settings or, you know, like make sure it was one to one. I'm not doing half resolution. And I was scrubbing around, moving the, the timeline around and just that's the only way to uh, explain it. It's a real time. Time. So if you want to do 4K editing, it will handle it flawlessly uh, in real time. Let's take a look at these benchmarks. I've just got some screenshots here from them. I did Cinebench 2024 to show you where it comes in there. And you can see just above the 9880H i9 was where I expected pretty much. And uh, Cinebench 24, you got to make sure that it's using, you know, the, the high power mode or whatever. So I did that. A Cinebench R23 here for everyone who just really misses this room. Yeah, I rendered that too. And you can see over there where it stacks in between those two Xeons just below the... Ryzen 7 1700X, which is an eight core processor of eight big beefy cores. All right, Geekbench, single core score, 2382. And for the multi-core score, we got 11665. This is the fun, go run Geekbench on your current system, especially if it's a couple years old, and see if this tiny machine is about the same speed as your, your computer. How about that OpenCL performance? There's our score with OpenCL. Uh, this machine, like I said, it's not really made for gaming, but I wanted to run Superposition just to see how it came out, pretty much as expected, so running on medium. So that's what we got there using that Intel Iris XE. Now the thing I like about Superposition is it does physics and graphics at the same time. So it's really taxing the machine just to see what it can do. So I decided to set all this up on the desk and um, I love the way this monitor works. When you have the, the PM16 monitor, you have a few different options on each side. You can plug it in with an HDMI, like a mini HDMI. And when you do that, you'll need to also plug in USB-C for power. But if you're able to plug in just USB-C, and there's two USB-C ports on this, if you plug up just USB-C to this or any other compatible device that is able to output both video signal and power through the USB-C, you won't need any other cables. So I just plugged this up with one USB-C cable, powered it on, it's running at 60 hertz, and this is a really pretty IPS display, which is also another uh, benefit is you get like that nice rich color. Now the contrast ratio is only 800 to one, but it still looks really vibrant. And you get those 178 degree viewing angles like I like with the IPS. This has the folding stand and I've got it folded so that it's a little bit more vertical than they show on their website, but, but I like mine that way. So one of the benefits, and this is just me talking, but one of the benefits of having a 16 uh, by 10 screen with that extra vertical real estate, a lot of the old games and a lot of the emulators I like to play, those are four by three. So this will actually make the picture look a little bit bigger because we have more vertical real estate for those, you know, four by three images. So playing games on the PlayStation look really awesome. I mean, Silent Hill looks awesome. And I was able to load up some of the shaders in RetroArch, like the mega bezel stuff. That taxes the CPU quite a bit when you're doing those CRT effects to make it look like we remember. No, no slowdown whatsoever. So I was able to play all the old games, TurboGrafx-16, sure old games run flawlessly on this. Uh, even GameCube games run perfectly on this. We also have some speakers on this monitor and they do it right. Even though they're tiny little speakers, we have stereo left and right. The focus is on producing a crisp, clean sound so you don't have a lot of bass, but the mids are amplified so that the voices are crystal clear and there's a little bit of sparkle on top. So I found that everything was very easy to hear. I think if you're someone who wants to take this from place to place and play your emulators, you'll find that it sounds as good or better than most of your old TV sets. So good job on the speakers. Again, they do get loud enough, but again, there's not a lot of bass because they're tiny little speakers. But this is great to have if you're just taking it from place to place and it sounds better than a lot of laptops. I wanna note that I did play those games with this. This shows up in your computer as an Xbox controller. If you hold that for five seconds, it will become a direct input controller to play even older games or whatever else work with old copies of Linux that don't support the Xbox or the X input stuff. But yeah, I played all those games with this. It's wireless. And I, I love this thing, but it's on sale right now, 30% off over at epicpants.com with the coupon code, what is it, back to school. So yeah, head over to Epic Pants and get one of these while you're, while you're on the internet. So anyway, this little Geekom with that 16 inch, 16 by 10 monitor is a really nice setup. You could take this 
and maybe a, a portable wireless mouse and keyboard and travel with it and have like take this with you if you're doing video editing while you're traveling this would be really powerful for something like that and uh, possibly better than a lot of the laptops on the market you know there, there are laptops that have similar specs but they're going to be at a really high price point more than this in the monitor by a long shot so you can get this in the monitor for probably half what you could get a laptop with similar specs you know 32 gigabytes of ram and a 99 and all that kind of stuff yeah plus this uh generally uh, generally laptops not all but a lot of them are going to throttle so when you get something like this that does not throttle and is able to just work 5.4 gigahertz yeah that's pretty cool so what do i not like about this i mean the sound um whenever you get something this small it is going to produce a bit of sound when it's at 100 percent so I can hear it when it's doing rendering, but when I'm playing games and such, it doesn't always ramp up all the way. So it's not so bad. Um, you know, like when the AC's on or my headphones are on, it's not, I don't really hear it. But if it's sitting here on the desk, like right here, uh, and I'm rendering something in Handbrake or processing something in Premiere, like once I'm finished and I'm rendering it, it does ramp up and you can hear it. And that's really the only thing that I don't like about it. Of course, it'd be nice if it had a graphics card capability or graphic capabilities comparable to like a graphics card that's three times the size of this entire unit but that's not what this is and it would be in a different price point and it wouldn't be the same thing and you can get external graphics cards to to work with this when you come home you know like set it down and use the USB-C to plug into an external box or whatever but that's beyond the scope of this video but really this is something for someone who wants a desktop replacement when it comes to productivity um, but also wants to be able to play a lot of old games a lot of indie games and some modern games with the settings turned down a bit so there you have it let me know what you think about this in the in the comments and do head over to epicpants.com make sure you get the, the deals all the hardware is on sale right now let me just show you you know do head on over here we got all of our hardware on sale right now and that means all of this beautiful stuff even the mouse pads yeah they're on sale but all of the finnick gear like these mice and keyboards these are all flawless sensors we picked this one because it was very similar and feel to the old IntelliMouse, and I think that's one of the best feeling mice in the world. So anyway, head over there right now. The coupon code is good for a few more days. Just put back to school over here. That's a, a good deal. I think I better buy one. All right, everybody, let me know what you think of this small computer, and one more time for the road, shall we? We're running out of adhesive. Can't let this happen. Get it on there. Ready? Yes. All right, I'll see you in the comments. I've put it back on there. You can look, check this out. One of the features is that the adhesive film on top can be reapplied even haphazardly so that you can enjoy peeling it over and over again. After a few times, it starts to lose its stickiness.